Opad04, otherwise known as just Opad or Dan, is one of Czech Republic's biggest League of Legends streamers in recent times. However, there have been a number of absolutely vile allegations made against him that are utterly damning. Now, before we get into these allegations, I just have to make it clear that they are originally coming from the Czech YouTube community, and much is lost in translation, but I've had some help, so take everything with a bit of salt. However, they allegedly involve sexual assault of a 14-year-old girl, sexual assault of his girlfriend at the time, and as well as a total of about 10 victims. Now you might wonder how the hell do you get to the point of having 10 victims but it kind of makes sense considering that the Czech community is accusing him of having slept with about 80 to 100 women per year. That means effectively that you sleep with a girl every 4 to 5 days on average. While that might be an average, he had been cheating on multiple girls simultaneously. From what I've heard there has been at some point 3 people at a time. There's a dark side to these allegations if you will and that is mainly about some members of the Czech community is outright accusing these allegations of being fake and giving the Harvey Weinstein of League, Opat, unwavering, blind and loyal support for his presumption of innocence. Opat's main talking points, not defenses by the way, I mean that the allegations are paid for and thus are also fake, most of his behavior alleged were a long time ago, yes and it was in fact 5 years ago which is true but he is now a different person today and has taken steps to change for the better by changing his lifestyle and going to therapy. He also accuses some of the allegations to be extremely exaggerated or just absolute nonsense. Some of these interviews conducted with the victims were coached, to put it simply. The reason why Opad uses these uh, talking points and basically character assassinates the allegations is because they come from a controversial Czech YouTuber named Detective Mike. To put it very shortly, he did a lot of prank videos and I quote, a cloud chasing YouTuber that baited the police multiple times, made fake content and over sensationalized things for years on end. Even though that might be true, it has no relevance whatsoever because of two points. The first one being is that the allegations are actually stemming from the victims themselves. They are just situated in Mike's YouTube channel. He's just posting the YouTube videos, but they are interviews and they're coming from the women themselves. And the second point that I have is that I had the liberty of talking to Evaluna about her experience with Opat. She's another talented league streamer in the scene and she was in a relationship with Opat during mid-2023 to February of 2024. And her experience with Opat is damning and very recent, showing that the talking points of having changed is just invalid. Much of what has been alleged on Mike's channel is the same case going for Evaluna. You have non-consensual sexual advances, you have sexual assault, you have grape, heavy manipulation and self-victimization and just pathological lying. But before we get into that, let's start with painting the bigger picture. So these allegations are mainly coming from Detective Mike's YouTube channel, which is somewhat of a small time YouTuber from the Czech Republic, you know, a country in Europe. The best way to describe him is by his own About Me page, which is after eight years, Mike is the director of his own police unit which oversees public order throughout the Czech Republic. And eventually the eyes of Sauron had been laid upon Opat. These allegations were further spread around in the Czech Republic and gained a lot of media attention via commentary YouTubers like Siberian, Agarius Reaxe or Agarius Reaction and Peta TV. These allegations are made in four parts by Detective Mike and it all started with one video titled Testimony of a Miss who says she didn't agree with Opat. And that video did not sit well with the people who watched him, probably Opat fans because of the, you know, aforementioned uh, drama regarding Mike. The video opens up with Mike and an acquaintance of his sitting in front of a stand titled Clash of Criminals, which is a jab at the event named Clash of Stars. It is a boxing event that Opat was taking part in. Previously, they had exposed that Novi, another participant at the boxing event, was on probation for a crime related to minors. He was subsequently removed from this event once this was exposed. So after Mike had made a video regarding the event and this person, Mike had gotten a testimony from a girl after having made a video on the earlier Clash participant Novibi. In this video, Mike defined grape according to Czech penal code and that consent is an important role in whether something is classified as grape and sexual assault. Now, they got a story from a girl where they argued that Opad essentially falls under this penal code, meaning that he allegedly committed sexual assault towards a woman. Now, they also say that they reported this to the police and they show actually proof of this having sent a report to the police directorate of the Yutsi region about Opad. So they start playing a voice line of a girl and her testimony about how Opad's sexually assaulted her. She says over multiple voice notes that she texted Opad and Opad texted back. They liked each other and he acted very nice when texting. Now 
woman talks about Valeri, which is Sulaki's real name, came to see Obad where he tried to game and himself. This is a thing publicly talked about in news articles due to mental problems Obad suffers from. After Obad came back from the psychiatric hospital, Obad wrote to her again and he wanted to see her. She agreed after she felt bad for him since he went to the mental hospital. Obad came to her and when she was at her sister's place with a friend of his via taxi, Obad said that she should come and she got into the car. She had no idea where she was going and he didn't talk to her the whole time, but just rather texted her while she was sitting right behind him in the car. So they were in the Utsi region according to the woman. This region is where both Obad and his friend are from. Now the woman eventually asked Obad where they were going and he texted back saying that they were going to Utsi which was a bit of a surprise to the woman I think. Since she thought she just would go out in the era she was at, she felt really strange about that she had to go for an hour trip from her sister's place and she didn't know if she had a ride back. Once they were inside and when Opa's friend left, Opa suggested that they watch a movie. She agreed but it got weird quickly for her as he started hitting on her. He then pulled down her pants and she pushed away Opa's hands telling him no. He however kept insisting that she should just be a good girl but after this she told him that she's scared of him in a way that he doesn't understand that no means no. Opa tries to reassure her saying that she shouldn't feel afraid of him and that she wants her to feel safe but she says that every five minutes she had to put his hands away from her and even while doing so he just kept putting them back. This kept on going for a while and at the end they just slept together even though she didn't really want to. She felt that her not wanting to sleep with him didn't mean anything to him. He constantly kept asking her if she was going to sleep at his place but she kept saying no to Obad. She rather wanted to go home. She had to call her friends to come pick her up and drive her home because he basically just left her there. While she was with her friend in the car, she became nauseous to the point of vomiting and she felt really hurt by Obad sexually assaulting her. The woman also eventually got messages from Obad fanbase mysteriously so a lot of people started following her at the same time and she got lots of messages and comments on tiktok which she later deleted because of these messages someone had also commented under her photo and she deleted that photo too one of these comments was shown on the video from mike where it ran pissing myself that she apparently fucked with the chad i guess this is obad just because he had followers and you apparently sucked as well and he only wanted to fuck you that's the only reason he messaged you according to detective mike obad had said something about her on his stream Allegedly, he said that he was bored of the sex and showed her Instagram on his stream. After the incident, the girl felt really pissed off and sad about Opad's actions. She was nice to him, but he retaliated. So in short, Opad put a facade of being nice to a girl, met up with her, threw her one hour away from the place she's staying at, attempted to have sex with her, she said no, he kept on advancing with her multiple times and she kept pushing him away. And once he refused to have sex with him, he just left her to stay at his place stranded. Later on, he talked about her on stream, essentially enabling his toxic community to find her and harass her. So this video from Mike didn't sit well with a lot of people, mainly open fans as I previously mentioned, calling Mike demented. For over 6 scares, Mike has confirmed to me that he's an absolute demented person who will do anything for numbers. There are a lot of jerks on YouTube, but you are one of the biggest. 12 voice notes with a random girl who has an edited voice and 2 screens of 3 open boys who allegedly quote Opad, zero evidence but 38 minutes of bullshit. I applaud another attempt at the visibility, you clowns. A desperate cry for attention from two demented people, a classic. Five days later, Mike posts another YouTube video which is an interview of Ivetka, the former girlfriend of Obad. Now, just to note that most of these interviews aren't structured, they have some input questions from an interviewer but otherwise the girl just speaks the story as she sees fit, so it's kind of hard to put together a coherent story, especially when using YouTube's translate function from captions. This also dispels Obad's later talking points of the interviews, especially Ivetka's being coached to talk about her experience. Now, from this translation, which might be wrong by the way, the story or allegations she tells goes as follows. Ivetko was 16 and when she started a relationship with Opant, who was about 18 to 19 years old during the time she started dating him from the summer of 2019 to March 2020. They met via Instagram and Opant knew her through acquaintances. And Ivetko didn't follow his online presence. After they initially texted, the conversation would keep on flowing and they agreed to meeting each other in mid-2019. But Ivetko says that most of the texting would be Opant just what amounts to love bombing her. And after they initially texted, the conversation would keep on flowing. The girl describes that Obad gave her tons of compliments telling her that he wants to marry her, that she's a wonderful lady, when he has a bad period he smiles because of her and if he could choose he would choose her to live with. He said those things even though he never met her. Keep in mind about this as this is something we'll see with Eveluna. Now Obad and Ivetka met at an event of sorts which I think is called Hit 
second in somewhere around mid to late 2019. During this time he was drinking and as a result ended up drunk. He had also tried something on girls under 15 years old and over 15 years old even in front of Ivetka. I don't know what she means by something, I guess it's romantic advances. She later references this in the interview and says he was giving kisses and things like that to several girls in front of her, which made her think that he probably is capable of doing that to girls who don't want said sexual or romantic advances. Ivetka and Opat weren't dating yet, for a while that he told her in the beginning that he didn't want a relationship, but then they were together and they weren't. It was kind of confusing for her and I'm guessing they never really communicated effectively. As time went on, he started calling her girlfriend so they would both later perceive to be in a relationship. This event I think she refers to is called Hit Point, which is Hit Point 2019. It is essentially a top level Czech and Slovak League of Legends league and has been a part of the more prestigious EU Master Circuit since the Continental Tournament's formation in early 2018. During this event, Ivetko saw a girl crying and she took the girl with her to the hotel Ivetko was staying at to find out what was going on. Eventually Dan, or more known as Opat, came to the hotel. Now Ivetka was going to charge her phone and while she was doing so, she sat on the floor with her back to the bed while looking at her phone. Now this bed was quite high she says and she started to hear noises amounting to kissing or rather the noise when you smack your lips. She was not able to look up due to the height but she was completely frozen, shattered after hearing the noise. She had the thought of there is no way that my boyfriend started cheating on me right in front of me at her hotel with a girl who was still crying mind you. The interview then cuts to another interview that would be posted a day later which is of a 14 year old girl and that is the 14 year old girl that was in the hotel room with Opa at Vetka. She says to the camera, he came to me and just threw me on the bed and was then laying on top of me. She was wearing shorts and she suddenly felt his hand on her thigh and Opa was breathing disgustingly, as she says, directly above the 14 year old girl's face and he had his fingers inside her sexual reproductive organ. The video cuts back to the interview with Ivetka. She actually took a picture of Opa laying on top of this 14 year old girl, but since this was 5 years ago and she didn't save it either and eventually got a new phone, it kind of made it lost to history. Opa returned to the bathroom and Ivetka sat down and started to unfreeze herself from the shock and she became furious and started pounding on Opa, swearing at him. She packed her things and took the 14 year old with her. Ivetka asked her if he had touched her, but her reply was no at the time, most likely due to the shock of some 18, 19 year old sexually assaulting a minor. Ivetka was in a mentally bad spot herself due to these events and she was drinking beer and later texted Opa. The text is shown on screen. How can you even tell me you love me when in front of me you're trying it on a girl? You love her everywhere and I don't know why. How can you even say something like that and act like you mean it? You don't play with feelings. You don't play with love. Yeah, I left. Are you meant to be sharing? Classically, I'll give you the finger and then drive home, I guess. Take the girls with you. You like that? As I can see. Ivetka didn't have anywhere to go and ended up returning to the hotel, but she didn't talk to Opat at all. They were going to the after party of the event and Ivetka picked up Opat at the front of the hotel. If I am understanding this correctly, she had heard him saying that she was angry and she didn't want a threesome. She was simply offended. This was crazy talk to Ivetka since she had at no point understood that she was going to have a threesome with that 14 year old girl. Opat never talked about this and she wasn't under any impression so. She was simply charging her phone until she heard her boyfriend sexually assaulting the 14 year old quite literally in front of his girlfriend at the time. Screenshots of this are provided where Ivetka says And that you didn't want to censor to complicate the simple and that it was all the same to you, that I was there? Why do you ignore again what I wrote to you? And that I'll simply think Then you wonder why I keep writing this to you over and over. And that I'll simply think that you wanted some kind of threesome and you'll make me feel even more like an idiot rather than tell the truth. Do you think I didn't hear what you said outside the hotel? That I'm an idiot? that I got offended because you wanted a threesome and I didn't? It kept building up right. It was okay. It annoyed me when I told you no already. You just smiled and gave her maybe three more kisses. As if after he wanted to maybe complicate things with at the hotel. And you touched her vagina there in front of me and watched to kiss her and I don't know what else. That totally pissed me off. WTF, I noticed. I felt literally worthless. And then at that after party when you wanted to maybe kiss some girls and kept touching them? WTF, I really don't know. I I really don't remember that I would do it in that cool place at the after party. Ivetka's friend told her to calm down and not be so offended and she thought maybe I am overacting and I will not make a scene out of this. At the after party though, things weren't getting much better. Open was already completely out of 
it and he, I quote from the translation, kissing, groping and I quote sucking girls according to the translation. Ivetka had then gone to get a drink but some guy had groped her and you can see in text messages that Opat wrote to her. I'm telling you, I have such nerves when someone touches you, but such nerves. I'm pissed because someone tries to touch me. More than those security guys, I didn't write that f you. You in front of me at the hotel touched the vagina of a taken has a boyfriend, 14 year old girl and you think it's okay. No, but you think that. Ivetka also seems to refer to the 14 year old girl again, saying that she confronted her. The 14 year old wanted to go to the police and Ivetka didn't really understand why at first. And then the 14 year old said that Opat had actually touched her and under her shorts. Ivetka asked her why she didn't tell her right away since she would have beaten him up there completely. The 14 year old said that she didn't want to hurt her because she saw how terribly in love Ivetka was with Opat. On the topic of contacting the police, it didn't seem like a good idea. If Ivetka had to testify under oath, she would need to say that she was not a witness to the sexual assault in order to not commit perjury. She only did hear it, and I mean, if I can interject here, of course, she actually did take a picture of it, so I mean, she must have seen him, at least being completely on top of her, which I would argue would be a strong corroboration. In any case, to the girls at the time, it didn't look like a good idea, and they were also very confused and conflicted about what to do. Just keep in mind that this was a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old. Ivetka, who was 16 to 17 at the time then talks about her relationship with Opad which sounded quite bad at times. She described the sex life as Opad wanting constant sex on and on and on and on and on. She mentioned that Opad wanted to have intercourse up to 15 times a day. Keep this in mind for later and it's actually something we will see in a lot of allegations. She remembers a situation where she was crying during sex and Opad sweet talked to her and consoled her by telling her that he loves her. She then refused and wanted to stop saying that it really hurts. She cried and it completely stopped but she had to mouth it which strongly suggests that she had to receive his white goo in her mouth despite her hurting and crying. She still says that he didn't force her, at least that's not how she remembers it like. Mike's video shows a screenshot of her text messages with Jirka where he said, Opa told me this in Prague at Otaku, that he did it with you 20 times and that your female sexual reproductive organ was already sore so you had to use your mouth, in which she responds, that's true, I almost cried here then, it hurt so much and he kept wanting and pressuring me. In Mike's video, Ivetka also explains how Opat filmed sexual acts with her, which according to Czech law is illegal since Ivetka was 16 years old at the time. They signed paragraph 192 of the Czech penal code with the production of child explicit images. Their relationship was abundant with one-sided cheating and Ivetka still stayed with Opat madly in love with him. For instance, when Opat was at home streaming, he was hitting on a girl but he claimed it was all of content for his stream, but if that was the case, Ivetka wonders why he was chatting with them in league private messages even off stream. Screenshots are shown of someone being mad at Opad for texting a 13 year old girl and his excuse is, it's just for content and Ivetka eventually just accepted it thinking it's for content. Such manipulation would occur often and frequently by Opad, making Ivetka feel wrong for her valid feelings of Opad cheating on her. I mean you had the alleged assault of the 14 year old girl at the hotel, you have him kissing girls in front of Ivetka and you know the list goes on and on. This cheating bothered her a lot and she eventually broke up with Opad because of it but they got back together sometime in 2020. It's sufficient to say that Ivetka is not a mentally stable girl and her previous relationship, prior to Opat of course, was her being victim to heavy abuse. Opat went to the cinema with another 14 year old girl who later became Ivetka's friend. This was some fan of his and she shared messages that were revealed on Mike's video where she was asked, otherwise did he force you or something? Well he tried and partly succeeded in touching me in the cinema over my clothes down to my undergarments, when I really didn't want to and I kept telling him I wasn't even 15 and he told me not to tell him that, etc but he was not very aggressive, feel free to mention that I was 14. The video is a two part and the next video Ivetka talks more about her relationship and how she got sexually assaulted by Opat. Here Ivetka talks about another 14 to 15 year old girl who was holding hands with Opat, which was weird I guess, but I mean they were friends I think Ivetka says. Ivetka also talks about another girl I think, where he forcefully kissed the girl, she shows screenshots of what he said, he touched my buttocks when we hugged and I immediately told him not to do that, he kissed me and I pushed him away. As New Year's Eve was approaching, Ivetka met up with Opad for some event, party I'm not entirely sure. She goes on to talk about how Opad wanted to kiss her, albeit he had a girlfriend at the time and she wasn't together with him. Ivetka had also at some point asked Opad how many girls he had and he said over 100 girls and Ivetka was the 28th girlfriend he has had. There was talks of a girlfriend calendar since Opad had a hard time keeping track.
track of all the girls he was messing with, so he made a calendar of who he was visiting and dealing with on certain dates. So after New Year's Eve, Ivetka and Opal slept in separate rooms, but one day she woke up with his rooster inside her, when she didn't really want to. Keep in mind they were not together and she had made it clear that she wasn't there to be some kind of a prostitute and they were in separate rooms. This was something that came out of the blue from him. She said, it's fine, but make sure you don't finish inside me because I don't have birth control. And she couldn't take pills at the time because she was doing important health tests. He had won a fucking job and ended up a inside her regardless, so she got really mad, beating him and insulting him. Ivetka says that he played the victim, asking Ivetka, why are you hurting me, I love you so much, why are you even so mean to me? She felt bad and switched off, and she started apologizing to him, and keep in mind that she was 17 at the time and really didn't want a child in her life, understandably so. Ivetka talks about more experiences such as Opal starting touching a girl, but she pushed him away and he got mad, which in turn the girl started crying. Opal ended up apologizing and consoling her, she was scared of Opal, but they ended up having intercourse. After that, the girl said that it was her fault since she let him have intercourse with her. But the next day, Opal's girlfriend at the time had written to her, which was Ivetka, which then Opal had said that this isn't his girlfriend, but some mentally ill girl who thinks they're dating. When Exolakis met Opal for the first time, he actually just outright graped her, according to Ivetka, and she knew of this since Exolakis confided in her. She was apparently locked in a room, and Opal strangled her and they fought. They showed screenshots of some bruises and texts between Opal. Now, now, Exolakis is a bit of a controversial person, and I have to say this. There's some people telling me that the story of her is that she has some mental issues and she also has a heavy usage of drugs herself, so there are some individuals accusing her of exaggerating the situation, but I really can't confirm that. And I mean, Opat's taste of girls are mentally unstable ones. Ivetka also said that during Covid, Opat had kissed a 12 year old girl, but they had face masks while kissing. When a girl was 12, Opat, which was 17 at the time, called her drunk and asked her, if I fucked you, would you tell anybody? She doesn't doesn't really have evidence of this though, as she deleted her Facebook account due to bullying. And in the video, Ivetka encourages other girls to talk about their experiences, just not only about Opad. And she had about 10 to 15 girls DMing her with screenshots regarding their experiences with Opad. There was also the interview with the 14 year old girl, which Opad had allegedly sexually assaulted at the hotel in front of his girlfriend. She talks much in detail about her experience, and what happened to her is a story for itself. After the event, she had gone to the after party as well, and rumors started to spread of Opad wanting to to have a threesome with his girlfriend and a young lady, meaning the 14 year old of course. The 14 year old had actually told quite a few people about her events, which includes people 18 and above, but no one had ever suggested to her that she should go to the police. In fact, for the next 5 years, only her closest friend would support her if she decided to go to the police, but the decision was left up to her. The 14 year old said that Opal was 18 at the time, a few months from being 19 since he was born in 2000, and note that the age of consent in Czech Republic is 15. So as you may know, or what's quite obvious, at this point is that all of these allegations happened about five years ago. One of Opat's talking points that you can see on social media is that he has changed. I mean, this was five years ago, he has gone to therapy, he has he's just generally become a better person. But all of this doesn't really make sense as they are dispelled from a very compelling testimony from someone whose name is Evaluna. And again, if you do not know who she is, she's a prominent League of Legends streamer that also plays competitively. And there is a reason why she's very relevant to this conversation, and that is because she was in a relationship with Opat but somewhere around mid-2023 to February of 2024. And the reason why the relationship ended in February of 2024 is following a grape incident with none other than Obat. So, um, first of all, can you tell me why did you reach out to me and especially about your experience with Obat? Mm, I think um, I reached out to you personally because of the thing I've seen on Twitter, of the thing I've got told, and also I saw how Obat defended himself uh, from the accusation of um, his exes or the other girls. And to me, the accusation that were told against him um, were like still uh, true to this day, while he said that uh, it was old stuff, that it happened when he was young, even though he did the same stuff to me. It seems to be the case that he has done uh, to, to the girls that are talking about allegations to him, he's pr pretty much done the same things to you, is what I'm getting at. So my question would be then, have there been any moments in your relationship where you basically felt uncomfortable or let's say you were pressured into any form of like intimacy that you didn't really consent to? Or maybe you did consent due to, let's say, co coercion by him begging you excessively, for example? Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of time. I would say like, no, and I'm not even kidding. 
uh, at least 15 times a day, uh, like starting from the moment I woke up to the moment I was going to sleep. The thing is, he would always like hump me and I would have to get kind of mad for him to stop because Helsey wouldn't stop. And of course, in, in in our relationship, we lived together. So I can, I mean, you can imagine that at some point I got tired of saying no because no wasn't the easy answer anymore. Was there any moment in your relationship where you felt pressured or coerced to doing stuff with him? Yeah, there was. Uh, I mean, I think there is one moment that was very shocking and... Uh, I think hard into the relationship, it was on Christmas day. We were not even at my place and for example, like everything went well and everything and I didn't want to have sex and basically I was at my sister's house and he was with us, like we were sleeping on the couch and basically he told me like he wanted to leave me because he, I didn't want to have sex with him. And then when I had sex with him, he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry because I was like kind of crying. and then. He, he said sorry after that, but it was basically like manipulation, like, okay, like I, I feel like you don't love me, I'm going to leave you. Um, and then he gets what he wants and he's like saying sorry to you. So during his sexual advances towards you or romantic advances as well, do you feel like you had the option to ever just say no or just leave at any point? Um, I mean... That's the thing, right? Like, I was saying no so many times a day that at some point I felt bad for saying no all the time or tired or even angry. I started to have like a lot of frustration. But then he will be the one telling me like, oh, you always say no. Um, you don't love me. That's why you don't want to. Oh, uh, you don't find me attractive. He will find ways to make me feel bad for saying no. And the thing is, with time, you you cannot drop the ball with your defenses, right? You're like, okay, like if I just do an effort one time for him, like is it really that bad? Or and then you just end up like kind of dropping the ball all the time because it's the easiest thing to do. So in, in our DMs, uh, we have talked a little bit and you have mentioned to me that uh, at one point in the relationship, I think it was towards the end, you mentioned yeah. that you basically got uh, what would be called rape. Um, could you tell me about your accounting of the day, how, how you see how the incident basically happened? Um, yeah, um, I was coming back from boot camp because um, I'm a pro player and I was coming back from boot camp with my team and he basically picked me up um, and the moment I entered the, the Uber with him he was like getting all lovely and touching my tights and be like oh my god I missed you so much now my the life is gonna go better because you're back because um, that was like one thing he will always say like if I wasn't here his life was like shit and everything so it was like he basically started to touch me and everything I was I wasn't feeling comfortable so I kind of like pushed him away he was like come on I missed you blah 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 we have we arrived home um, it's like a 15 minute ride so we arrived home and I went straight to the bed and he followed me and he was like kinda I mean letting me know he wanted he was kind of humping me and then when I said no because I was tired because I just went back from playing and I barely slept um, he, he kind of got angry and he, he told me like Oh, but come on, it's been a week and a half or something like that. I don't remember how many days, but it's been a week and a half. And you're you're telling me no, like you don't even miss me. And like, I was just kind of stunned locked because I was really tired. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sleep. And he got angry and went to stream. I took my nap, so I slept, and when I woke up, he was back in the bed with me. He started to hum me and kiss me, and I was like, no, I don't feel like it, I, I don't want to. And he he told me, oh, come on, you can make an effort for me, it's been a week, like it's not gonna be long. And then, even though I told him no repeatedly and told, told him I didn't want to, uh, he went down on me and he was like, see, that's not too bad, and then he just started to do the stuff, and then... Like, that's when I realized what was happening during the relationship for so long, because I just started to cry. Um, he didn't really see my face because he was just on top of me, against me. 
So I, I started to have tears running down my face. And when he was done, I went to the bathroom and I just sat in my, in my shower for like, I don't know, 10 minutes straight. And he was back to happy. He wasn't grumpy anymore or whatever because he got what he wanted. The interview with Eva is obviously a summary, but if you want to have a look at the full interview, there's an unlisted version of it that is, you know, in its entirety, basically, in the description below of the video. And your boy here, Hasmat, he has been pretty much looking at PDF files and all this weird stuff from the league community that we have today. Looking at the interview or just listening to the interview, it is more of a personal connection that you have to it, mainly because it's some person talking to you about her experience. And I feel like it's way more touching than looking at a block of text of someone just saying this and that and you're trying to find out the narrative and then you're also looking at the screenshots and evidences of just weird stuff happening it's you're kind of getting desensitized to it and that's how i feel at least from doing all of this stuff but please do keep in mind that opa's extremely predatory behavior is something that follows him today those allegations from five years ago are still very much relevant to this day everything that you see today his instagram posts his responses which are extremely weird we'll get to that in a second they are just another attempt a futile attempt i would rather say of controlling the narrative and just absolving him of any wrongdoing. Ubud had responded to these allegations, or at least the first allegation in a stream of his, and according to this one Czech YouTuber, Siberian, it is one of the worst statements he has ever seen. So there is an interesting way that you can analyze the response of an allegation, and it's just by looking at the response of the guy that has allegations levied to him or accusations levied to him. Questioning why a person is responding the way he is responding, I feel like that is a very good way to get a glimpse inside the mind of a person. So say for example Bill accuses a person named I don't know Joe or something that he murdered Zoe and then you have Joe's response being well Zoe wasn't really that good of a person you know and um, I mean that's all I'm gonna say about that it's not really a matter of questioning why Bill is accusing Joe of what he's doing and flaming Bill of just making unbased accusations I feel like it's way better to look at Joey and questioning why he's responding the way he's responding you know why is Joe not outright denying what's happening or why is he responding in the way he just did and if you're into true crime, you probably have heard of this or seen this happening in those type of YouTube videos, as this is frequently used in analysis of interrogations of, you know, suspects in police work. This is something we'll also apply in Opa's case. Opa decided to live stream in order to feel more authentic rather than come with a written statement when accused of doing serious crimes. He opened by calling it drama and that he genuinely doesn't know which girl it is about. This stream response initially came out only when the first allegation from Mike's first video was released. The 14-year-old story and the Vetka's interview didn't come out yet at this point. And I mean, this doesn't really surprise many since he's been with a lot of girls. As I said, it's allegedly over 80 to 100 per year or a year. So I guess you can kind of extrapolate from that. Since Opad also had these girls to his apartment, Opad somehow brings his sister in as a credible witness I guess but this is just entirely dumb because typically speaking in legal matters of course friends and family members are not considered reliable witnesses except for cases when they directly witnessed a criminal activity in question this is mainly because they could or are very likely to be interested in the outcome of legal proceedings having the interest of their fellow family member to go free and I mean it's quite obvious which side the sister is going to take mind you he didn't start out by denying the accusations or allegations but he's just outright surprised which girl it is Opa then says he never physically hurt a girl and he mentions specifically just physically and the way he phrases it here is almost certainly going to be used against him because th the question you have there then is what about mentally did he hurt someone mentally and I could argue that the wordplay being used here could be a mistake from Obad since he is like kind of subconsciously admitting that he hurt a girl mentally speaking by admitting it subconsciously he opted to use the word physically of course in dramas allegations accusations whatever there are benefit of the doubt uh, involved and but if you look at everything holistically from what Obad but has done and his response and his reaction, it kind of starts to make sense why it is that way. Opa then goes on to say, paraphrased, even if the allegations are false, I can't do anything. Every girl that's ever been with me can tell you a similar story. Essentially, he's calling the allegations made up, but without any proof regarding that. What's very funny about what he's accusing the girls of, you know, uh, false grape accusations. In the Czech Republic, that is varying between low estimates of 2% and high estimates of 10%. And this could be a genuine benefit of the doubt you can 
give to Obot, but now there is allegedly 10 victims regarding Obot saying the same thing of how they got manipulated, how he forced himself upon them without non-verbal or verbal consent, how many of them suffered from that interaction with Obot, and how they were all led to believe that they were in the wrong about getting raped. If you get 10 allegations levied to you, that person is cooked and usually the benefit of the doubt just kind of just disappears, especially so if the allegations are, you know, consistent, they're similar, they're in depth and they have together with some circumstantial evidence such as screenshots. We see this in cases with Harvey Weinstein where he had sexual abuse allegations levied to him by more than 80 women in 2017 where the abuse is dated back to the late 1970s, meaning almost 40 years ago from 2017. In any case, it's not like sexual misconduct is foreign to Czech women sadly. Website consent list stats that only 600 cases of rape are reported but estimates that there are 12,000 cases of rape per year. That's a 2000% increase of the original number, meaning 34 victims each day but only one to two reports it to the police per day. That of course is the most serious accusation. Women get groped, they get assaulted, all of this happens in reality, and I'm not sure if this is taken into account by the website. Oba didn't really speak much about specifics on his stream, but he would make a public Instagram story later. This full statement he has on his Instagram story just shows you how incredibly manipulative Oba can be. So Oba apparently accused Ivetka of saying that she didn't enjoy the intercourse in her relationship with Oba, which is kind of far from the truth. Since my ex didn't like the sex, I'll show you the other side of the argument. The only remotely similar thing she said was that when they had sex for the 15th time she started crying because it hurt and he stopped after a while. This doesn't exactly mean that she didn't enjoy it for the first 5 times. Opot goes on to show screenshots of his ex-girlfriend Ivetka wanting to have sex with him, loving him and posting her Instagram story saying she loves Opot. Now I would argue that all of this is actually proof against him because you're just kind of paving the way or the narrative that this girl was so mentally unstable that she kept on loving Opot even though he sexually assaulted her. Because even if Opa did those bad things to her, she would still forgive him at the time. And the funny part of this Instagram story, of course, is that Opa did never refer or mention to how he penetrated Ivetka while she was not his girlfriend and that she was sleeping at the time. And he just fixates on this invalid point that Ivetka didn't enjoy the sex in the relationship when this was not even a point contested in her original allegation video from Detective Mike. So essentially, Opa is just arguing a point that's correct, it's not even a contested, which kind of makes him look correct and I mean, he kinda is, alright? So it's type of a deceptive debate tactic here. A Czech YouTuber Siberian also found a clip of Opat admitting he kissed and maybe touched her, I mean they mentioned all over her. So this girl was 14 and he was 17 at the time. <gasps> Ty jsi vždycky taková, že? Už na, už na jít pojď, když jsme se viděli po Paríži, ano. Jo, no, já? Jo, už jsme vedle sebe seděli, jo, já se to všechno pamatuju. Ty jsi mi dával ruky všude. Já jsem s tribu. Je, promiň. Ježiši Maria, Ježiši Maria. <laughs> the statement Ivetka said in her interview about how Valeria or Exolankis had confided in her and told her that she got forced to the grave was also talked about by Exolankis in an Instagram story of hers. And she basically says that she would stay silent on the topic for her own mental health, but not to protect Obad. I feel like vomiting as if what you did to me the first time I was with you wasn't enough. Brag about it on your stream, dude. I won't drag it out. I won't comment it further because right now I just feel so bad about all of this. I'm not mentally off for this. I protected you and never publicly said what you did to me because I thought you had changed and our relationship was beautiful. I believed you would never do such shit to me or other girls again, but you did it to them during our relationship. With this, I'm ending all of this. Don't worry, I will keep quiet, but not for you, but for my own mental health. On a controversial turn of events, Mike also confronted Opat at his apartment, but keep in mind this was only done after the allegation of the first video. You know, the first video where they were sitting in front of this stand, the criminal of the stars. So Mike had traveled to his apartment and subsequently took out electricity of his apartment to make him go out. All of this was done while Opat was streaming by the way, and once Opat came out, they offered to help fix the electricity as electricians. But they also confronted Opat, which agreed to talk to them if they weren't recording, but they were recording the audio of this conversation. So the main points that Opal said is that he denies all the allegations and he seems to also genuinely not know which girl it is about because as we know he used to have numerous different girls come to his place regularly. Opal also says that the things Valeria said, Exolakis, are said out of vengeance and admits he wasn't a good boyfriend to her and cheated on her. He denies ever graping her though, he further accuses the allegations are just fake and they have some motive behind them, although he really doesn't mention at all what the motive is. He also denied ever getting intimate with underage girls, meaning 
under 15. Now there's another damning thing here about uh, Opat and it's regarding drug abuse. So it's a pretty much known fact that he likes or uses the drugs to an extreme extent. And there's basically two points I have regarding this. So the first point is that I've had an anonymous source talk to me about Opat being responsible or at least having a hand in exaggerating Slatter's drug addiction. So he sent me a video regarding it and I'll just release the audio file. Smoke the shit man, come on. Smoke it how I thought to do man and now do inhale again you fucking f you gonna listen to me i'm gonna smoke one more time a cigarette in my house and i will show you how to smoke and do not see any excuse why it's not better basically this video does not come from me just so you know it comes from someone else and uh, and he actually recorded this conversation because he thought that opad was legit manipulating slaughters into taking meth methamphetamine obviously this is a bit circumstantial but you do what you want with this information i personally think it's compelling enough to consider mainly because of rumors and other accountings i have while talking to various people and how they're talking about these two individuals and there's also some information that is just known out there because of stuff happening on stream or publicly talking about on instagram story stuff like this secondly which i think is an illegal thing i'm not entirely sure uh usually it is in the world there is evidence of Obad utilizing his current girlfriend named Kyo and he's basically utilizing Kyo's Xanax prescription for his own drug addiction. This I also got from a source that wants to stay anonymous. I won't really release the audio of this clip since Mike is actually using it in legal proceedings from what I've heard uh, so I'm just not gonna disturb that. However, I will be reading out the transcript of it. But what's happening is that Opat says that he was at his girlfriend's place and that she had Xanax and she only had 0.25 milligrams. Slazar says that he takes 200 milligrams to Opat, which Opat replies and he says that, yeah, I ate all of them. Kyo, which is in the voice call as well, says that she's getting more Xanax, which Opat says, yippee, which I guess is a reaction because he thinks that maybe he's gonna get more Xanax. The anonymous leaker also has screenshots of Opat writing that he has Xanax from another person, that one being Slatter's friend, in which he says, Kyo's prescription is just 5 milligram and probably like 20 pills that wouldn't even last me a day in my peak. Now, all of this, I would say, pretty much indicates strongly that Obad is using someone else's medical prescription for recreational use, which could be illegal. I'm not an expert in Czech law, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that, but elsewhere in the world it pretty much is illegal. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. Opat has a lot of issues in his life currently, and, and personally, I, it doesn't seem like he's taking any accountability whatsoever, and it has to start somewhere. So translating all of this is a pain, mainly because people write in slang or use slang, and translation then becomes just utter dog shit at that point. However, I managed to contact Mike and ask him to do a quick interview summary of the Opat allegations, and we hosted a space on Twitter. If you want to see what he has to say, you can check the link in the description for the full recording. However, one of the most interesting things he said in that interview is that he's been doing more interviews with more of the victims and will be releasing them over some time. So, I mean, it remains to see what crazy story those girls have to say about Obat. 